My name is Perry, Perry Oaks. Um, I've been a busker in um, Padstow, beautiful Padstow, um, since the last century, as I like to say it. Yes, I came down for the eclipse in 99 with the express intention of being here a couple of days. Once you've been got by the vibe of Cornwall, you don't leave. I mean, I, I was a dispatch rider in London, um, used to used to deliver important parcels or blood samples or whatever. And um, 15 years of that, I thought, hmm, about time to find something more pastoral, you know, something a little bit, a little bit more better for you. It's just a real grand place. Um, I first came here with a, an ex-girlfriend who was a hair wrapper. You, know, you might have seen some hair wrappers in town today. They're somewhat frowned upon, if you put it that way, you know. Um, but no, I, I, I love the place, uh, especially I busk in the evenings. I try to anyway, um, because when people have put the children to bed or they've gone out for a nice meal and are sitting on a bench having a glass of wine, it, there's a so much more relaxed vibe as opposed to at two o'clock in the afternoon and everybody's dogs try to fight each other or something like that, you know. I mean, I've had, I've had days where, uh, you know, in the evening um, you get a couple of families coming along and they've had a, a lovely time, they're obviously quite jolly, had a few drinks. And, you know, I've had sort of 50 pounds from somebody. Um, I once had 170 pounds, this chap came up and put it into my hand and shook my hand and I looked at it and I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah, he says, um, I've, just, I've got terminal cancer, I, I don't care. And he, he, you know, he, he was well dressed, he obviously had money and didn't really care about the money and I thought that was interesting. So that was a very weird day, that doesn't happen very often. Um, and recently, just after lockdown, I came back and uh, I made nine pounds in three hours, just over three hours. That, that was a little soul destroying. <laughs> during, during this last three months, from March to, um, to where we are now in July, um, yes, my MOT has gone, my uh, tax has run out, uh, and the insurance has gone. These are three things that would have been achievable had I been at work. The, the van would just be legal. I wouldn't be talking to people like yourself or people on the radio because this is, <sighs> it's quite difficult because I remember that people have the MOT thing. MOT garages are now closed, it's locked down, so we're not going to arrest you for no MOT. I was look, just looking for a little bit of, um, I don't know, a little bit of leeway, a little bit of, um, I don't know, I can't quite think of the right word right now. But um, no, the council were fine. They said if you're living in your vehicle, then we can't remove it whilst you're in it. Um, but I'm not sure that the highways agency, who are the people that are coming next Tuesday to take it away, and I'm not sure they go have the same rules or enforcement systems, you know. But I think if people are really honest, um, people do get somewhat jippy with alternative um, lifestyles. Because they might, if they're honest, at the end of the day, be a little bit envious of it. Like, mm, why have we got the mortgage? Why have we got the kids to put... It, whatever. It's... I think people just misrepresent what, what it is. So I've been, I've been living quietly and it seems that it's unfortunate that somebody's taken it upon themselves to complain to the council and to start a procedure whereby they just want to see my old truck go. And I can... You know, I, it's not parked outside your house, it's parked very much sort of surreptitiously, if you like. You can, if you didn't know where it was, you would find it difficult to find it, you know, so... Yeah, it's just, um, if you could just cut me a bit of slack, I'll be all right. The highways agency, because the uh, MOT has run out, even though the vans are mobile at the moment, the, the batteries are flat, I'm not driving anywhere, I'm not intending to drive anywhere. Um, I think that's the reason that they can have the right to take your vehicle. I, I, <laughs> I would like it, I know that it's asking the machine, the government, whatever, um, if you could cut me a couple of months worth of slack, I could re-legalise my vehicle and then you wouldn't have to think about me again. And yes, yeah, in, in answer to your question, yeah it is. Please don't think about me. If I put myself in the street, in public, to make an exhibition of myself, or as I say to people often, I'm not here to create an atmosphere. I'm here to create an atmosphere see what I mean? It's, yeah, that's, that's me, that's me. That, you can put that on my gravestone, actually. It wasn't here to create an atmosphere. <laughs>